Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me is Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy for his usual book investigation and review. And there's an interesting book here. It's by Rod Boothroyd, one of Bob's former students, a trained in TA. And it's called uh, Jung Jungian Male Archetype, Shadow Warrior, Magician, Lover King, Guide to Male Archetypes. It's a bit of a departure from TA, isn't it, uh, Bob? <laughs> well, Rod trained, uh, you know, trained at our place, the Manchester Institute, and became a TA therapist. And he, I went on to work with the shadow part of the male, if you like. So he went to work specifically with men and had an interest in young <laughs> ideas of the shadow uh, in, in the male archetypes. And it's not too far removed from transaction analysis in a way, because if you think of Jungian's descriptions of male archetypes and the shadow in particular, he's talking about the cut off, disowned, fragmented parts of the unconscious which he which Jung called the shadow mm. and in TA uh, it's simply part of the ego if you like which get repressed yes so it's different language with different way of a similar way of thinking about it really and it's an interesting way because myself I've worked for years 30 odd years now working with the cut off parts the repressed part uh, or the shadow part of the uh, unconscious if you like and a lot of my work has been healing and working towards integration of the different parts of the self so it's interesting um it's an interesting departure in terms of Jungian ideas but in terms of uh similarity in what he was trained in uh you know it's as we say you and me have said many times many of the models actually meet in some ways yeah, it's very true, Bob. And I think it's quite, it's quite interesting that it's, it's male archetypes. Mm. And, and you were saying off camera, Bob, that he'd really brought this up to date. He'd, mm. he'd contextualised it for modern men, I guess. Mm. So what do, what do the archetypes tell us? For those people who perhaps don't know what archetypes, warrior, magician, lover, king, what, what would they represent? What would they look like in terms of how, how we would view somebody or... Or, a, or a, you know, males in general, I guess. Uh, they represent, in many ways, um, and I'm not a specialist in Jungian archetypes, but anyway, the, rep the repressed parts of the self, if you like. So warrior would mean what it speaks, obviously, with the, the male uh, repressive warrior in us, the, the external leader, if you like, uh, the person that is taking the initiative of the male, and then you've got the magician, often called the, you know, the trickster in some ways, which is the intuitive, magical part of the self. And TA, you might want to think of it in terms of the what Claude Steiner called uh, that intuitive um, part of the self. And then you've got the king, which is the real sense of authority in us, which we often bury in terms of uh, defining ourselves. And then you've got the lover, that romantic part of the self, which often again gets cut off. So they, they, they represent cut off parts of the self. And if you go and read this book, of course, which I skim through, not in great depth, but um, I was interested in the parallels in TA, then he's talking about a model of the unconscious in a way, uh, which parts of ourselves get repressed into. Mm. Yeah, so it's those parts of ourselves that might not might want to come out. I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of the love of someone who's afraid of showing emotion, maybe, and, and that is yeah, an intimacy. Intimacy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, or the warrior, someone who's who's frightened of standing up for themselves. Yeah, you know, those... being assertive in the world. Yes, absolutely. So it's brought up today. So in terms of um, the audience for the book, Bob, who would you say the audience is? Well, this was, this is interesting. Of course, it's for it's for people I think who are. Uh, advanced practitioners I mean it's for interest for beginning people but you know by by the time you've done a four-year psychotherapy training you've started to really understand the connections between the past and the present and how trauma is dealt with so for example how we deal with trauma is to cut off parts of ourself repress them so they actually get 
disowned from the self. Mm. So, for example, so the more a person starts to learn how to be a psychotherapist, the more likely they are to understand how to work towards integration of these different split off parts of the self, whether it be the romantic self, the person that's um, afraid of intimacy, the person who finds it very hard to be assertive in life. These are parts which get caught, repressed specifically with trauma. Yes, I was, that's what I was going to ask because these, these, these are the things that get pushed away in traumatic situations, lost or become unavailable to mm. people so it sounds like a book for advanced practitioners all those people who just have an interest in young young is a, of a perennial interest i think to anybody in the therapy world because mm. his ideas are i think it's just so different in, in a lot of ways from traditional models of, of therapy where he goes to a more spiritual place a more symbolic place um yeah, yeah. 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 Right. because these are symbols Hmm. The symbol, they're romantic symbols. They're symbols which talk about repressed parts of ourselves. And of course, Rod also talks about how to facilitate groups, what he calls shadow groups. So men getting together, reclaiming the parts of the male psyche, which they've repressed, hmm. and how to, how to uh, really bring out and externalise the male potential of themselves in the modern age. Well, Bob, I think I think on that very precise and um, and very kind of eloquent um, note, um, I'll just say that we're going to put a link to the book below. Have a look if you want to buy it. Bob doesn't get paid for these uh, reviews; he does it for the love of literature and to share his knowledge with you, his vast knowledge with you. And as always, Bob Cook, thank you very much. Yeah, that's book number eighty-five. Book number eighty-five. Well, there we go. And uh, why don't you have a look in the playlist? For all the other books, the other 84 uh, that Bob and myself have reviewed, or Bob's reviewed. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Bob. Bye-bye.